Welcome back to our Wednesday Bible study. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you're with us and you've taken us through another week, another month. We thank you for all your blessings and your grace to sustain us, continue to protect us. And we again pray, oh God, that you bring this pandemic to an end. But in the meantime, Lord, protect us, uh, protect our kids as they go back to school and continue to help us to grow in Jesus' name. Amen. We're beginning on a brand new series from the book of Proverbs. Um, For many of you, um, you might have this habit of reading through the entire book of Proverbs, uh, perfect uh, 31 chapters, one for each day of the month. So if you don't, I recommend that uh, to you. We want chapter every week, and uh, every day rather, and you'll be finished in a month. But we want to begin our series in part one with the purpose of the Proverbs. Uh, for many people, they uh, read it um, and they don't realize that there's a divine and there's a practical purpose behind the Proverbs. So uh, we want to begin with chapter one, verse one. It says, these are the Proverbs of Solomon, David's son, king of Israel. Their purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline, to help them understand the insights of the wise. So I want to begin by talking about the five purposes Uh, the five purpose statements of Proverbs. The first purpose statement is to gain wisdom through discipline. In in verse 1 in the New Living Translation, it says their purpose is to teach people wisdom and discipline. Wisdom and discipline are twins. Uh, You can't take one away from the other. If you want wisdom, you need to have disciplines in your life. If you develop disciplines, uh, you will have that wisdom that God will give you. And so it takes discipline and time to study the book over and over. It takes discipline in life to put into practice some of those things that you um, learn and the information that you derive, the truths and the principles that you get from the book of Proverbs. When you put it into practice, when you apply it in your life, you will see that you will gain certain disciplines. And when you maintain those disciplines, it becomes habits. When you maintain those habits, it becomes your life. It becomes a wise a way, a, a practical wisdom for a purposeful life in Christ. So to gain wisdom through discipline is the first one. A discipline is something that we can do that enables us to do what we haven't be, yet been able to do by our own direct effort. Someone once said that trying is, is not enough. A lot of people try. And um, we shouldn't just encourage people to try. We should instead Uh, observe the spiritual uh, principle of not just trying, but training. So don't try, train. In Timothy 4.7, talks about training. Our training is connected. It's connecting us with a power much greater than our own, the Spirit of God that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. So don't just try and say, I've tried, it doesn't work. Train. Uh, training is more a discipline, it is more a habit, it is not just one time, it is an entire process that we follow through. The other way discipline works is because we're developing spiritual disciplines as new healthy habits. We have a lot of bad ha- habits. Bad habits don't really need training, we just pick it up over time. But to develop healthy habits, we have to train our body, we have to discipline our body. Discipline trains us to have self-control. And a lot of uh, what goes on in terms of physical training is in this area of self-control. And self-control is the opposite habit of self-gratification. Uh, if you put these two on, on opposite end of the scales, then you realize that, that you know, to have self-control, you would be uh, growing uh, in the fruit of the Spirit. The spiritual life works the same way. Fasting is the spiritual discipline of the body. You, Paul says he, he pummels the flesh to, so that the spirit can have a dominance in us. Praying is a spiritual discipline for the spirit and soul. Reading the Bible and meditation is a spiritual discipline of the mind. Tithing is a discipline that deals with the problem of greed. And it carries over into our daily life, into the areas of financial equity, the financial uh, responsibility. So those are some of the disciplines that we need to begin to develop. And um, to gain wisdom, you need to begin to say, I want to to train in this area. So let's pause for a moment and consider some of the discussions. What benefits have you reaped because of a spiritual discipline? 
that you have adopted in your life? What benefits have you reaped? Think about it. Sometimes we don't consider that. Discuss it a little while. Let's move on to, to this next point, B, to perceive the words of understanding. That's another purpose, is to perceive the words of understanding, to help them understand the insights of the wise. What's the point of, of uh, wise uh, Solomon leaving behind for us all these truths if we cannot understand, we cannot perceive it, if we don't take time to discover how it applies in our life and the fruit of wisdom? The book of Proverbs will help the reader have discernment. What is discernment? Various people define it different ways. Discernment is to judge well and to act correctly. Judge well, act correctly. Uh, the book is full of topics which the writer Solomon is teaching us to perceive and to understand, uh, to, to discover uh, discernment. Things like finances, human emotions, the different characters and personalities that, that we have to live with, how we live with that, how we respond, how we relate, casual, intimate relationships, how to parent our children, how to be a good child, how to be a good husband, how to be a good wife. It deals with all these issues in our lives. And all of us read the same Bible, but not all of us glean the same truths and acquire wisdom from it. All of us acquire information, but many of us don't know how to apply it. The application of information, the application of truths is the development of wisdom. Our approach and attitude to the Word of God makes a world of difference in the understanding and discernment of it. So the Proverbs moves us from where we are to where God wants us to be. It moves us from where we are to where God wants us to be. Let's again pause for the next discussion. Discuss Proverbs 1 verse 7. Fear, the fear of the Lord is the foundation of true knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and discipline. So how does the fear of the Lord lead us to wisdom? Spend some time thinking about that and, and sharing your thoughts with one another. Let's move on to point C. To receive the heart of wisdom, justice, and gracious living. That's the third purpose statement of the Proverbs. To receive the instruction of wisdom, justice, judgment, and equity. Solomon is teaching us that we should become students of wisdom, students of justice, judgment, and equality. The purpose of the Proverbs is not merely the transfer of facts, the transfer of information. It is also to impart a heart of compassion, a heart of mercy, a heart full of grace. You see, when you look at um, the three aspects of, of the uh, impartation of wisdom, the first part has to do with cognitive dimension, our brain information. It refers to insight, the knowledge about living well, how to understand, how to deal and interact with other people. And then, of course, it moves on to the reflective dimension of wisdom, which is the ability to look at events and oneself from different perspectives to, and to overcome the tendency to blame other people or circumstances for one's own situation. And finally, it brings us the compassionate dimension of wisdom, which comprises sympathy, compassion for others. <clears throat> the purpose of the book is not just knowing wise facts, but acting wisely, acting favorably, acting with compassion, with grace towards others. The Bible is not just there to inform, but to impart truth, principles, wisdom, and to impart compassion. The word that is uh, used there in the New King James Version for verse 3 is, is, is the word receive, to receive the instruction of wisdom. The word receive literally means to get, to obtain, to fetch. But in some applications, it means to seize by force. I believe that what the psalmist is trying to tell us here is that, that for us to just casually read the Proverbs, we can build up our understanding and our information and our knowledge. But for us to, to catch, not just to learn, but to catch the heart of wisdom, to catch the heart of, of, of God, then we need to seize by force. We need to lay hold of. In another passage of Scripture, uh, the same word receive also uh, refers to, the, is, is, is translated to marry, to marry the two. And, and, and it's this idea of letting this instruction, letting this wisdom, this, this heart of, of gracious uh, living be part of our life forever and ever. So we're not merely called to be students of the word. 
but we are called to be disciples of the author of the Word of God, God Himself. So it's not just students, but become children and disciples of the Lord. Let's move on to point D, to grow in knowledge and wisdom beyond your peers and beyond your years. They always say that wisdom comes with age. But yet the Proverbs in Proverbs 1 verse 4 says this, this Proverbs will give insight to the simple, knowledge and discernment to the young. It doesn't say the old there, it says the young, the simple. You see, the Proverbs make the complex plain. Things that seem so complicated, so difficult to com comprehend, challenges that seem to be beyond us in terms of our problem-solving ability are simply presented in the Proverbs. The simple-minded and the young are not known for wise living. But yet when you are able to read, to study, to discern, to receive the heart of wisdom from the Proverbs, even the simple-minded, even the young become wise. A naive person is different from a person who has simple faith. And we always teach people to have that simple faith. What naivety is, is that, you know, you don't understand and you blindly wander and blunder into situations. And, you know, of course, the outcome is not favorable and the outcome normally is failure or you mess things up. But when you talk about simple faith, it is a person who may have lots of education, lots of experience, lots of wisdom, but yet they have that simple faith that God knows better than me. God understands more than me. A person who has simple faith is one who always would defer to God, to God's simple truths, rather than just depend on their own acquired knowledge, their street smarts. You defer to God's higher knowledge. You say, God, I know, but you know better. God, I may be smart, but you're all-knowing. Socrates uh, says something that is worth repeating. He says, the only true wisdom is in knowing you know nothing. That's the simple faith type living that we have, is that if you truly are wise, you realize that I really don't know much, and God knows everything. So let's just, again, pause for a discussion. Let's jump to Daniel chapter 1, verse 17, and, and read that verse and then discuss what made Daniel, Shadrach, and Abednego stand out from the rest. What made Daniel, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego stand out from the rest of the young people? Let's move to the last point. The fifth purpose statement in the Proverbs is so that we can keep growing, keep developing, and discipling past our prime. Proverbs 1, verse 4 and 5 says, Let the wise listen to these Proverbs and become even wiser. So if you think you're wise, don't stop. Read more, study more, receive more because you become wiser. Let those with understanding receive guidance by exploring the meaning in these Proverbs and parables, the words of the wise and their riddles. The Proverbs are for everyone of every age. Don't be, believe the lie that says you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Sometimes people stop learning as they get older because they've chosen not to learn. They've just switched off, they have retired, but they also re retired their brains. Not because they're incapable, but because they have this mental block, they have this psychological uh, myth and misunderstanding that I'm old now, I can't learn new things. All new research has shown us that, that our brain cells keep replicating even as we age. So it's true that it may take longer to, new, to learn new information, to learn new wise truths from God, but it is not impossible. So be open to the fact that God's Word has something to teach you even as you age, even as you get into your uh, senior years. Our willingness to open, to listen with an open heart is the key to continual growth in wisdom and understanding. When you're young, be open to God. And then as you grow, as you learn, as you become wise, be even more open to God. And as you age and come to the twilight years of your life, continue to listen. You notice that the word listen 
is repeated 31 times throughout the Proverbs. A sample, Proverbs 123, Come and listen to my counsel. I'll share my heart with you, and I will make you wise. Proverbs 133, But all who listen to me will live in peace, untroubled by fear of harm. So don't fall into the subtle deception that you are an adult, you are a parent, you are a grandparent, and you have acquired, you have experienced so much that you are, you are wise, you have enough wisdom for a lifetime now, your role is to just pass on that wisdom. No, no, no. You know, let's, let's humble ourselves even as we age. In Proverbs 2 verse 1, it says, My child, listen to what I say and treasure my commands. My child. He's not referring to young people. He's referring to all of us. We are all children of God. So don't close your mind. Don't close your heart to God. He is still your heavenly Father, and we are a child in His eyes. So again, I want to close with Proverbs 4.10. My child, listen to me and do as I say, and you will have a good, long life. Don't you want that? Wise until our twilight years, serving God, a blessing to everyone. May God give you wisdom as you walk through this world, as you serve, as you love, in Jesus' name.